Hello and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're solving lead code problem 1151, minimum swaps to group all ones together. Given a binary array data, return the minimum number of swaps required to group all ones present in the array together in any place in the array. Let's look at an example. We're given this array 10101, so we want to basically group the three ones together um, all together, right? So there's three places we could do it. We could do all at the beginning, right? We could put them there. We could put them all at the end. So here, here, and here. Or we could put one in the middle, which it already is there, here, and here, right? So those are the three ways that we could do it. But which way uh, requires the least amount of swaps? Well, putting a one here or a one here would only want to require one swap because we have to move this one here. Oop, why is that thing so fat? Uh, or this one here, right? Because that only requires one swap. So that's why the minimum is one. In this example, there's only one one, so we don't need to do anything there. We don't have to swap anything because it's already in the minimum swaps to group them together. Here, um, we have an example where uh, we're actually not going to go through all of them, but basically it looks like you have to put them all at the end. But yeah, it's it's too complex to actually go through the example. But so let's just actually think about how to solve this. So if we think about this, we know up front how many ones there are in our um, array here, right? We can count them. We can figure out the number of ones and we can figure out the number of zeros. Now, why is this important? Well, Obviously, we want to put all the ones together, which means what? What is the length of this array um, that we need to form, right? The length of the array that would form, um, you know, all the ones being together would basically be the count of all the ones, right? Um, because that's all the ones, right? So what we want to do is we want to minimize um, actually building this longest array. And the way that we're going to do that is we're actually going to use a sliding window. So we're going to use a sliding window of size number of uh, ones, right? Because obviously we wouldn't want to go larger than that because there's only, you know, whatever number of ones in the array. So we're going to have a sliding window of size one. And what we want to do is we want to keep track of the number of ones. So we're going to track the number of ones in our uh, window, right? And we basically want to find out what the biggest, so the largest uh, amount of ones at any iteration in the window, right? Because this will be the maximum amount of ones we'll ever have in our window. And then the rest we just need to fill by swapping them. So our kind of final answer will be the total uh, ones minus the max ones um, in our uh, window, right? Because, you know, say our window here is of length six and the maximum that we can get in our array is of length four. That means that only two elements, two zeros need to get swapped out with a one somewhere else in the array. And we've actually built our solution here. So we know the total ones because we can just sum up the array and get that. The maximum number of ones, we'll need to use a sliding window of size, whatever the total number of ones is. And we'll basically go through the array from left to right and kind of build our, um, our sliding window. And every time our sliding window actually becomes greater than um, or the number of ones inside of our sliding window is actually greater than, or actually it can't be greater than the thing. Our sliding window, sorry, is greater than the number of ones that we have, um, then it's gotten too big and we actually need to shrink the window such that it's always basically of size, um, you know, the number of ones. And then that way we can basically keep track of the maximum ones we've seen. Um, and then we can actually just use that to compute our solution. So that's the general intuition. Just want to build a sliding window of size, you know, number of ones, and we're going to keep track of the number of ones in there. And our final solution will be the total number of ones minus the maximum ones in our window, which makes sense because those are the, you know, the elements that aren't ones and the ones that we need to swap. So maximizing this, uh, we'll basically minimize the amount of swaps we need because total uh, as you know, this number is fixed. So as large as we can get this number will actually give us our solution here. So let's now code this up. It's actually relatively straightforward. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you in the code editor. 
Okay, let's now count this up, code this up. <laughs> what am I saying? Okay, the first thing we wanna do is count the number of ones in our data because we're gonna need that for our final solution and also to keep track of um, when we're going through our uh, sliding window. So let's now get that. So we can say ones is equal to the sum of the data. Obviously there's only zeros and ones in here. So summing over this will give us the total number of ones and how many we have. Okay, so once we have the number of ones, we also need to keep track of basically the count of the ones that we have in our current subarray and also the maximum count that we've seen so far uh, because we'll need that for our final solution. So we're gonna say the max ones equals the cur ones and this is going to be equal to zero in the beginning. And we're having a sliding window and we need two pointers to basically keep track of where our window uh, start and end is. So we're gonna say left equals right equals zero. Now what we wanna do is just move the right pointer towards the left uh, sorry, towards the end of the array, uh, and we're going to be moving our sliding window. So we're going to say while right is less than the oops, sorry, right is less than the length of data. What we want to do is we want to say that <coughs> the um, current ones we're going to basically add to it whatever the current um, pointer is. So obviously, if the pointer points to a one, we will increment the current ones by one. If it's a zero. Um, at this index, then current ones won't get incremented at, at all. Just a little bit of shorthand to save us from writing a bunch of if statements. All right, now we also wanna move our pointer up by one. And at this point, now that we've done that, we actually need to check whether or not our window is too big. Remember, there are only ones, uh, total uh, ones in our subarray, or sorry, in our array so there's no point of having our window greater than this because we're not going to get the right answer we need to keep it to a maximum of whatever this value here is so we're going to check whether or not the size of our sliding window is actually too big so we're going to say if right minus left is actually greater than the number of ones in our data then we know that our um, sliding window is too big so we need to start closing it up by moving the left pointer forward so in this case, we also want to basically um, keep track of the number of ones we have. So as we move the left pointer up, we want to remove any ones um, that are in our sliding window. And we're gonna you know, do this by getting rid of any elements from cur ones. So we're gonna say cur ones, and we can kind of do the opposite of what we did here. And we're gonna do minus equals um, data of left. So basically if the left is a one, we're gonna decrement cur ones. If it's a zero, obviously it will stay the same. And then we can move our left pointer up and do this until our sliding window is now the correct size. Cool. Before we move on to the next iteration of the loop, we need to basically keep track of the maximum ones that we've seen. And this is obviously going to be the maximum of whatever the current maximum ones is and the current ones in our um, sliding window. And then the... Uh, you know, loop will continue until our kind of while is broken, and then we can move on to simply just returning our solution here, which, if you remember, is just the total number of ones minus the maximum uh, ones that we've seen so far, and that is the minimum steps it would take. So let's just run this, make sure I didn't make any bugs. Looks good here. Submit this, and it is accepted. So, what is the time and space complexity of our algorithm here? Obviously, all we're doing is just going over our data from left to right. And in this case, you know, all we have to do is just iterate over the data. So it's going to be big O of n, where n is the length of the data, right? We just have to go over um, the data index by index. For the space complexity, as you can see, all we do is define these little variables to kind of hold um, values here. And we don't actually need to do anything with those they're just kind of pointer variables we don't assign any extra space so we have big o of one space cool so that is how you solve this problem quite an interesting one fun little sliding window one to kind of practice your skills there uh hopefully made sense hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did why not leave it a like and a comment it really helps me grow and drop a subscription if you want to see more videos like this otherwise i will see you in the next video bye